Okay, and uh, welcome to uh, Thoughts from the Pastor. Uh, I hope you watched that video um, that I posted with this uh, Thoughts from the Pastor because I think it kind of that's what I'm talking about. And I'm going to be doing uh, three of these. And then if you, um, I'll, maybe I'll repost my uh, kind of message on the final section of the video. And so just looking at these videos, uh, the last couple, I kind of threw a devotion. So that's what we'll be doing for, through the ne for the next uh, day here or the next couple weeks here. Okay, so uh, watch the video. And, um, and, uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, I'm just going to note of just a couple things and just share with you. Uh, I thought it was interesting that, uh, that Mike there or, or Michael, um, notes that one of the biggest lessons from his time in the, in, in the mission field in, um, the Amazon there is that we live in a spiritual world and, and that we live in a spiritual battle as Christians. And I think that's so important. Ephesians 6, 10 to 18 says this, Finally, be strong in the Lord and His mighty power. Put on uh, the full armor of God so that we can take our stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of darkness in the, in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes... You will be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, in with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness um, in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to this, take up the shield of faith, which can which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all of God's people. And so we live in a spiritual battle. This, this passage is not profoundly unique to us. We've heard it before. We've probably heard messages on it. But yet, how often do we forget that when we're engaged day by day, week by week, with, with struggle, with with um, issues, with, with battles, right? That we forget that our, our battle is, is, against flesh and, is not against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces of darkness in this world. And how often do we forget, you know, in those moments of response to whatever's going on around us, that like, nope, this is a spiritual thing. I live in a spiritual world. That means I need to turn to the Holy Spirit. I need to turn to Jesus Christ. And uh, we often forget that and we just engage, you know, in our day, we engage in what's going on around us. We just engage, forgetting that we're in a spiritual world and we're in a spiritual battle. So often we don't really even think about the spiritual uh, side of things. And I thought it was interesting that, um, that um, Mike's friend there said, yeah, it's clear that those, those, those kids were like listening to the, the demons, right? And, and he just recognized the hate, Right. He recognized the hate in our culture and in our day and age. We don't even look at things on the news that are clearly evil. Right. And we kind of we kind of go, oh, yeah, well, that's horrible. Well, that's that's evil. But we don't really take time to like really consider, OK, no, this is part of that spiritual battle. The people around us, although we don't call them witch doctors and we don't we don't see them as, you know, and they people, I think a lot of times people don't recognize when they're being influenced by the, by the spiritual forces of darkness. They we're, we're just so, uh, we've been just so influenced by our secular culture saying that the only thing that exists is what I can see. There is such a massive amount of influence of the spiritual world on us that we, we're not even perceiving it. And I think even people that are deep into it, to the point that they're, they're, they're so full of hate and so full of anger and so full of the thing, you know, like, you know, oppression, that they're willing just to go and slaughter other people. Um, you know, and it's interesting that, that, that um, you know, th this person that we would consider, I think probably, um, you know, um, uh, techno technologically wise, kind of like from a place of, you know, they're still way back there, you know, in these tribes, they're, they're not as advanced as us. And here he looks at and just like, it's so simple. It, you know, that's, that's the darkness. That's the, that's the spiritual forces of darkness that work there. And, uh, and yet if you, you know, you talk to, you know, these people that do some of these incredibly evil things, if you ask them, okay, uh, are you demon possessed or whatever? I think probably many of them would be like, well, no, 
But in me, there's like this rage, you know, in me, there's this darkness, there's this, you know, um, and, uh, and I think that even those that in, in our culture, uh, especially that are even connected to those things, don't even realize it for themselves. And so I think it's, it's interesting that one that has uh, grew up in this culture of very spiritual, recognizing that it is a very spiritual world, despite what the educated people, right, of our day would say. Uh, these people, the idea that there is no God or the idea that there is no spirits, I mean, these guys aren't dumb. They're not morons. Um, they would, you know, um, just because they live in tribes or they live in the jungle doesn't mean that they're fools. No, these are brilliant. These are, these are men that are brilliant. They have their, there's intellect and, and yes, they understand different things, um, than we understand, but, but they're not fools and they would just go, no, but clearly they're spiritual things, right? Like they've, they've seen it, they've experienced it. And it's so interesting that one who has that kind of grown up in that spirit experience, like Mike's friend, uh, just looks at looks at what's going on in our culture and can just see when there's like that's clearly influence of darkness and the spiritual forces of darkness. And I think we miss that, but we shouldn't. We be we need to be more and more aware of it. Not that we want to be jumping into you know studying all the demonic things. That's not the point. But just be aware, as the Bible gives us what the Bible gives us, right? Like, be aware of the fact that the Bible tells us you're in a spiritual battle. The Bible tells us we're in a spiritual world. That's not just on Sunday mornings when we go to church. That's in every minute of our day. We're in a spiritual world. We're in a spiritual battle as believers in Jesus Christ. The irony is that we don't take time, even as Christians often, to really pay attention to this spiritual battle that we're in. Um... And I think one of the reasons that uh, we don't is because we don't talk about it. And so often our conversation and the conversation, the things that we hear around us, shape our, the direction of our, our thinking. And we don't think we don't think of that often, but it's so true. Um, the, um, uh, there's a quote that I often use in, in my leadership stuff that says... Um, the, um, you know, reality hangs on the thread of conversation. So what, per, what a person perceives as reality of what is real and what isn't real in a huge way is influenced by what other people around them say or don't say, like their, their views. So if you get in a group of, of 50 people and 49 of them believe that, that we, um, we live in a spiritual realm and they talk about it constantly, uh, it'll, it'll be a matter of time before those last two kind of go, uh, okay, well, if, you know, they, they start to pay attention to that idea, uh, where, where perhaps they were ignorant of it before. Um, that, that, that's how we work as people. So when we live in a culture that sees ourselves as, uh, somewhat more superior intellectually than, let's say, the people in the, the Amazon, right? Uh, those jungle people, they, you know, um, when we live in a culture like that, that says, well, they might experience, you know, spirits and stuff, but, you know, when they're on their highs and stuff, but that they don't actually understand what's going on there in the mental capacities and what, you know, different things in the mind are being sparked because of the drugs and so most of that stuff's made up and, and they don't understand that because they're so primitive. When we live in a culture like that, which we do, despite us saying, oh no, we're not like that, we are. Um, what happens is we start to believe, okay, well, us more intellectual superior people don't believe in spirits and we don't believe in God because we know better. Unfortunately, the, 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 the issue with that is that we don't know better. And uh, the problem is perhaps our superiority, um, you know, uh, God-like issues that, well, I'm smarter than everyone else because I haven't experienced anything, um, is more maybe the issue in our culture. And what happens is, though, is as, 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 as more and more people think, well, it's smarter because look at those people, they, they're, they're very intellectual, and that's what they tell us anyway, and they don't believe in God, and they don't believe in spirits, and so then in order for me to be more intellectual in this greater group, well, then I need to also kind of move towards that way, so I'm not going to talk about my experiences, 
I'm not going to share anything. And, and we, and the whole culture kind of moves that way where to the point that even as Christians, we don't talk about the spiritual world and we don't share about those things because we just assume people aren't interested. We assume that people will think we're stupid uh, because we believe this stuff, because the more intellectual people of our culture who know everything and who we should be listening to, they, they haven't experienced anything, so they think that that's, you know, primitive. Um, and the problem, the problem is that, that we don't talk about it, and as we don't talk about it, we also, it shapes our thinking like it doesn't exist. Um, where there's cultures all over the world, that would be like, that is just the dumbest thing. It's, clearly it exists. Clearly it exists. Um, and what we have to, as, as Christians, realize is that we're influenced by that culture. And that we too, I mean, I mean, ask yourself, when was the last time I just jumped in and started talking about spiritual things with, with another Christian? Even with other Christians, I'm, I'm, all, I'm a little bit like, Ooh, I don't know if I'm going to, if I'm going to do that, right? Because I don't know where they're, where they're at. And so we are influenced by our culture. And, um, and we, uh, we don't talk about it uh, a lot. And because we don't talk about it a lot, we start to forget that we are in a spiritual world and we are in a spiritual battle as followers of Jesus Christ. Um, and even though our culture, to some degree, is ignorant of this truth, we are to live engaged in this truth. And it's, and it's not just a simple truth, it's a foundational truth, right? Uh, we live in a spiritually active world, and we can be ignorant of this, or we can embrace that truth, and because we are in a spiritual world, focus our attention, in, in, in not just a little way, not just on church on Sunday, but focus our attention towards being connected in that spiritual world, uh, and, and because I'm a spiritual being, and being connected to as the Bible calls me to, not being worried, not being focused on all the the the, the darkness and the in the in the evil spirits, not pursuing that, but rather pursuing Jesus Christ day by day through the power of the Holy Spirit, right? Who is a spirit, a spiritual world, right? So I turn to the spirit that lives in me because I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, right? Uh, Mike also, so that's something we need to be aware of, right? And we need to be doing that. We need to be doing it. Like, just like as these, these uh, people that followed these demons and these evil spirits were daily engaged in, uh, uh, you know, um, recognizing they live in a spiritual world and, and, and being engaged in that, we need to be the same way. But of course, turning to the Spirit of God that lives in us uh, and the Spirit of God of, of love and truth. And so let's be thinking about that. The second thing um, that was uh, I thought it was interesting is that Mark shared that the old man who, who said, I know you, I have seen you in my village. He argued with the guy, being he was ignorant of the spiritual battle he was in and ignorant of the spiritual world and what was capable um, and what these, these guys were engaged in, right, in, in terms, in, in this spiritual world. Some people, um, so it was obviously this guy was uh, what they call his eyes strip projecting. So, uh, leaving, uh, he was leaving his body and spiritually traveling, uh, to, to watch Mike in, in another uh, country. And, and to, he said to like, to war with him, to battle with him, to lie in wait, right? He, he meant it for evil purpose. And through demonic means, um, uh, oftentimes evil, uh, evil people that are engaged in following the demons and stuff can be engaged in it. But these people often have more, and, but what, what, what stood out to me is that these people often have more understanding about the spiritual realm and what is going on than often we do. Uh, and, 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 and again, that just is a realization that, no, I live in a spiritual world, and I am in a spiritual battle. And uh, something that we need to remember is that it's not just... You know, oftentimes we, we live in such a way that we think it's only the eyes of the people who can literally see me that are watching me. And that's not true. Uh, the, the eyes of the heavens are watching. And how we live, whether it's out on the street in public or in our own homes, right, or in the closed, you know, in a closet somewhere, so that we think, well, no one can see us now. No, no that's not true. The eyes of heaven can see us. We live in a spiritual world. And we are engaged in a spiritual battle. So let us be thinking about the, the greater our lives, whether we're seen by literal, physical, or by physical eyes or by spiritual eyes, our lives should bring glory to God at all times. 
And that's because, guys, we live in a spiritual world. And uh, I'm not saying that I'm, you know, I, I, I'm perfect, uh, but I'm saying this is something that our minds need to be bent towards more and more uh, to recognize, okay, I, I, I'm bringing glory to God. And I, or I, my life should be bringing glory to God. Um, and uh, wh wherever I'm at, wherever I'm at, it's not just in public. Uh, in my own home, how I, you know, um, how I deal with uh, my family, how I deal with my wife, how I deal with my kids, how I deal with my brother or my sister in my own home. That brings glory to God, whether people see us or not. And so often we're, we're, a, we're a culture, uh, you know, kind of you see it in Facebook, you see it in, in Twitter and other thing, where we put our best foot forward, we put our best pictures up, we put our best videos forward. And we kind of do that with our lives as Christians too. And we need to be careful to recognize, no, no, no. In the spiritual realm, the eyes of the heavens are watching us all the time, and our lives need to be bringing glory to God. Why? Because we live in a spiritual world, and we live in a spiritual battle. Uh, third, Mike shared that many of the men that uh, had been demon-possessed demon shared with him, you have a spirit that the spirits in me hate. Um, this... Um, and, and then he also said, or he reminded, uh, or, or remember back when he said that his friend said he was so full of hate and that um, he, he would just want the spirits, they would get so loud, of, so full of hate. And, and, and he hated his wife and he hated his family, he hated the other people in his village, but the, the, the spirits would get so loud just to shut him up. He would go and he would kill someone from another, another village. And um, it just so shows how, how full of hate the demonic world is, how full of hate. And they can, they can try to come off as, as love. You know, I, I think in our culture, we have this twisted view of love. But, it, but you, can tell, you can tell what um, the difference between the God of love and the twisted view of love, which, which, which we have in our culture, and which I think the demons often try to communicate, uh, it, it still comes back to hate. It still turns around to hate. Like in our culture, we have this ideal of love. Uh, but if you don't agree with what I'm saying, then you're, 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 you're a bad guy and we hate you and we can, we, can, we can treat you like rubbish, right? We have this idea of, you know, uh, we're going to stand up for the fringe groups and we're going to protect the minorities and, and we're going we're gonna to just love on people and just let people love and encourage people just to, you know, like this kind of idea. But the second that you don't agree with me, well, then you're a fringe group and we're going to hate on you and we can beat on you and we can, you know, take your, take, take, take stuff from you. We can take your money and we can, we can do whatever we want to you because you don't agree with us. See, that's, that's this idea of love that gets shifted over to hate. Um, and that's, that's, God's love is profoundly different. So note this, in the spiritual realm, there's this powerful nature um, of the one side. There's this nature rooted in like love and agape love. And on the other side of this battle, there's this nature that proclaims to be love, but then is actually rooted in great hatred. And uh, John, First uh, John 15, 17 and 19 says this, This is my command. Love each other. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Note the difference of core natures between the, the Spirit of God and the, the, the nature of God being love, and then this nature of, of the demonic world being, being hate. And although it's shrouded sometimes, in a, a, a misconstrued, misconstrued um, kind of um, pseudo, oh no, it's love. It, it, it's a, um, you know, it's a, a, a torn definition of the word love. And then, but it, it'll come back to hate. The spirit of this world, the demons and Satan have this undertone of hatred, even though there is this uh, kind of um, covering of, of love. Um, Coming up in the video, Mike, Mike shares how the man uh, who have demonically possessed, who were demonically possessed, called their spirits um, children, so that they they kind of had this love uh, friendship or relationship with them. But but then he also shares in that story, and you'll hear it in in a, in a, in, a, in um, next week or the week after. Um, if you haven't watched the video, the whole video already, uh, you'll hear what what that ends up being in the end. There is still this undertone of hatred. Don't. Don't be deceived, um, but recognize these profoundly um, kind of side-to-side -side natures between love 
and um, or between like this false love and this rooted of, and of hatred that, that's kind of deeper within and then this absolute love. Um, and it's important that we recognize that we're in a spiritual world, we're in a spiritual battle, and the nature of our God is love. Uh, John 13, uh, 3, 35, 34 to 35, I'm just going to read it. It says this, a new, man, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So like recognizing this, this profound nature between the two and then recognizing that our God is a God of love and then he calls us as brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ to be those that put, like really guys, put all else aside and love each other. Of course, we're going to fail at that without Jesus Christ. So then what we need to do is recognize, again, we're in a spiritual world. I am a spiritual being. I need to turn to the spirit that lives within me. And that spirit in Jesus Christ is the Holy Spirit, right? If I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, there is a spirit that I've been given. And it's the Holy Spirit of God, right? And I need to turn to him and I just say, God, in, your, in Jesus Christ, by your Holy Spirit, help me love. Help me to put me and my stuff aside and help me love others. We are in a spiritual battle. And the spiritual forces of darkness hate. They are full of hate. And we, uh, and, um, and we see... They hate Jesus. We see they hate the Holy Spirit. We see that they hate the people of God. They also love the people of the world. But that also, that love is, is fragile. That love is based on if we all agree. But even amongst each other, there is hatred. But we do not live like the people of this world. Our eyes and our focuses and our purposes are set towards glorifying God in Jesus Christ by the presence and the work of the Holy Spirit as, as we walk in Jesus' will and way. And so then we should be contrast. We should be a contrast, right? We should be, the, 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 there, there's this profound, you see why there's this profound battle? Because the spiritual nature, when I didn't know, know Christ, was about a pretend love, but still a deeper hatred, right? But now that I am in Christ, there is there should be this profound love, profound agape love that flows out of me to my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ and to all, to all the people that I know. And we know that God loves everyone, including his enemies. God loves everyone, right? It's an agape love. It's, 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 it's unconditional. He loves sinners even though he hates their sin. And we know this because before, before uh, we, even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Even be, and what that means is, and if you put it in order, uh, even, before, even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So that meant that Jesus, God sent Jesus into the world for God so loved the world that he sent Jesus, right? Um, that he sent Jesus into the world to die for my sins. So that means even while as a, yet a sinner, Christ was acting and engaging in love. So we know this to be true. So there's this profound difference between how we should live because we recognize we are in a spiritual battle and at the core of those two natures in this battle, one is love, one is hate. We live in a spiritual world and we are in a spiritual battle. Um, but we do not need to live in fear and be afraid, like Michael said, because the main thing is that God sent his son, Jesus Christ, into this world to die for sinners. He, and, and he did it because of love. And, and Mike says, that's key. And he was right. That is key. That is a key truth that has changed everything in this battle. We don't need to live in fear of the spiritual battle. And those spirits who are at their core, who, who in, in their core nature are hatred, who are, who, who are full of hate and, and want to kill, we don't need to fear them. But because we know that Jesus Christ who is love, lives with us. He is in us. He and he has already defeated sin, death, hell, and hatred by his death and resurrection. And he did that because of love. Notice the profound different stories 
of like the narrative of this side of the battle, which is the, the demonic forces and the spiritual forces of darkness, and the narrative of that story, and then the narrative of Jesus Christ and this side of the battle, right? You understand why they are in battle. One is rooted deeply in love, and what is rooted deeply in a pretend love, but that still focuses on, on itself, and it hates, and it hates, it hates others. It hates if it doesn't get its own way. It hates what, what doesn't agree with it. It hates that what doesn't allow it to do what it wants and be what it wants, right? And so we recognize the spiritual battle. And guys, because we recognize this spiritual battle, and because we recognize what side we are on in Jesus Christ, it should call us to a deep and a profound um, a level of loving. And it should become one of our, our key focuses. As, it's, as we're called to in Scripture, it's one of the key focuses in Scripture for us to do that, but we under, start to understand why at a spiritual level, and, and or, or more even better put it, in terms of the spiritual battle. At the spiritual battle level, we start to understand why love becomes so profoundly important and why God calls his people in Jesus Christ to love others, right? So then, let us not live in fear. Let's not live in hatred. Let's not let's remember that Jesus Christ has been given all authority and that the gates of hell and all of Satan's army and all the forces of, of darkness and, and, and those powers that are behind him will not prevail over God's purposes in Jesus Christ, our Lord. We live in a spiritual world. Let us not forget that as followers of Jesus Christ, who is the God of true love, that we are in that battle. We are in this spiritual world in a spiritual battle. And our calling is to, in Christ, love. And we are not alone in this battle. We have the God of love. We have the spirit of love, right, in us. And he lives in us. And he's able to give us uh, and, and fill us full of his love. So let us be remembering, guys. One, we're in a spiritual world. Number two, we're in a spiritual battle. And number three, the core kind of nature of, of, both, of one side in Jesus Christ is love, agape love, uh, 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 un, unrestricted love. The other side has a pretend love, yes, uh, for sure. But it's a love that has to agree. It has to let them do what they want. It has to give them their own way, right? It's the, and, and, then if, and then if that doesn't happen, then that love turns to hatred. So that's the other side. So let's remember that. Let's remember that. And then let's remember, lastly, that we are called to love. That in Jesus Christ, it is one of our key focuses to love each other. To love the lost. To love God. Because that is the nature of the spirit that lives within us. Right? It is profoundly different than the nature of the spirit that lived in those witch doctors, witch doctors, which they, from their own testimony, would say that it was hate. The nature of, the, of those spirits was hate. They hated others. They hated Jesus. They hated those that carried his name. They hated wives. They hated the people around them in their village. It was hate in our culture. I mean, sorry, in our, in our, uh, in our, the spirit that we have, in our camp, if you will, on this side of the battle, the spirit that the nature of the spirit that lives within us is love. Let us love, remembering that we're in a spiritual battle. Our love matters. Our love impacts that battle for the glory of the Lord. Let's be engaged in that battle, impacting others for the glory of the Lord. Guys, have a great and godly week.